The United States federal government established the United States Patent and Trademark Office, which issues patents. And an inventor who believes that she has something patentable will apply to the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Now that application must meet the substantive requirements for patentability, and it also needs to meet all of the formalities of the Patent and Trademark Office. Most importantly among those formalities are including something called claims. These are single sentences at the conclusion of a patent that succinctly summarize what the inventor has done that's new and different. Now the Patent Office has 1,500 uh, scientists and engineers that are examiners of patent applications. And those examiners will review those applications to determine whether the invention meets the criteria. If an inventor is successful in convincing the examiner, the Patent Office will issue a patent. And that patent then becomes the exclusive rights to make, use, sell, or offer for sale the intellectual property or products covered by those claims in the United States. So traditionally, patents had been uh, limited to things like materials, you've developed a new metal, or we've created a new machine. Nowadays though, with the ubiquitous nature of artificial intelligence, as well as computer software, we're raising interesting questions about who is the inventor, as well as what is patentable subject matter. Now in the United States, we have a very clear standard that abstract ideas are not patentable. E equals MC squared is not patentable. Even though uh, Einstein came up with that specific theory of relativity, it is something that by itself cannot be protected. It's a scientific notion. But when you apply that to, for example, global positioning systems, when you take that equation or that discovery, and then you apply it to transform some matter or some information into something new, you use that information as part of an input or processing system, and create something new on the outside, that can in fact be patentable. And so you do see patents that are directed to software. The substantive requirements for patentability are fairly straightforward. It must be new, it must be useful, it must be non-obvious. When someone comes to us, we oftentimes need to engage in a very robust dialogue to understand what have they done. And so we'll ask questions to get at those uh, those legal issues, substantive legal issues. But we'll also ask business questions along the way. So we'll ask, what have you done that's different? What's the nearest bit of prior art? Who else is working in this field? Who are our competitors? If we were to patent this, what would we patent exactly? Is it an article? Is it a process? And then, important for litigation, we'll ask questions like, who else funded this? Do we have any agreements, joint ventures, sponsors that we need to acknowledge? How will we know if someone's infringing? And most importantly, we ask this question, who else knows about this? Because there are certain bars to patentability that come up when an invention is publicly disclosed.